for our theme music. Every good hero. Let you have some. All right, everyone. This is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. It's time. It's Thursday. It's been, I think, a month. Or if not over. I don't know how long it's been. Going on the Bad Dog Channel. Going to the Dog Pound. He's picking me up in the truck. Catching me with the net. Bringing me in. It's always fun hanging out with the Bad Dog. Uh, 10 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time over at his channel. Join in the fun. It'll be interesting. It'll be a probably talk about what's going on with these New York Giants. Want to do a quick video today. Was going to do a three-minute with online Big Blue video, but it might go a little bit over that because I got a couple things I want to say. I also want to thank everyone who's joins these members-only page. It's $1.99 a month, and that's a lot for $1.99. You get uh, special badges. You get premiere videos you get uh exclusive content we did a video yesterday which is very interesting because that video which is members only yesterday is what i really think of daniel jones not sugarcoated not that i ever sugarcoated but it gives a little bit more in-depth perspective so go and join if you want if you don't want don't it's all good <laughs> it's all good i love everybody love the giants love everyone it's a day full of love want to talk about a couple things uh, ESPN has come out and predicted the Giants to finish at 7 and 10. That seems to be the same thing that I predicted the Giants to be. We also have uh, Odell Beckham. Potentially, it looks like he's going to be dropping over on the can to the Kansas City Chiefs. I want to talk about the Odell Beckham trade for a minute, but I want to just go through a couple things. Joe Judge came out and uh, issued a warning to his team yesterday about the bye week. It was make your right, make the right decisions. And that's actually a smart thing to do. And he says, it's natural for a guy, for a lot of guys to kind of let their hair down this time of year. He said, explaining to the message, you get a few days off, you step away from the stressful situation, you kick back, you have to make sure that you put yourself in the right surroundings and you make the right decision. We talk very openly with our players about making the right decisions. You know, it's funny. You can't get Kadarius Tony to shut up and stay off Twitter, but you're going to have these guys, you, you, you want to preach about having guys make the right decisions. They can't make the right decisions on the field, but we're going to make the right decisions off the field. On the injury front, looks like Saquon Barkley and uh, Saquon Barkley, <laughs> Saquon Barkey, Barkey, Barkley. I can't talk today. Andrew Thomas and Lorenzo Carter, who all have ankle injuries, are going to be kind of testing the waters, the trainers say. So there's a chance with a week off, they could be playing against the Bucks. I think that's kind of interesting. That's kind of that's kind of an interesting situation. We'll see what happens. We'll see what goes on with that. I want to talk about the Odell Beckham trade. The Odell Beckham trade was kind of one of those trades that you either loved it or you hated it. I understood it. I said the time when they did it, I understand the trade. I understand what the Giants' philosophy and the thought process was, process was for moving the generational talent. I did not agree with it, but I could understand why they did it. In exchange for Beckham, the Giants, of course, got Peppers. Two draft picks who became a uh, first rounder, Dexter Lawrence, and the third rounder, O'Shane Zimenez. You kind of also forget the fact that you, you had a couple of the play. You, this was actually all kind of combined in uh, with the Olivier and Verdon trade and the Zeidler trade. It was all kind of, it was really basically one big trade, but this is, this is specifically the players that were traded for Odell Beckham. Now, if you take a look at who won this trade, you got Peppers. You know, he's been a full-time starter for the last two years. He's appeared in 32 games. He's got 196 tackles, two interceptions, four forced fumbles, 17 pass defenses. His season has ended now with the ankle and knee injury. I don't think he's going to be back. That, of course, that happened against the Panthers. He's played solidly but inconsistently at times. Then we got Dexter Lawrence, 17th overall pick in 2019. 91 tackles, six and a half sacks, and 31 starts. For his first uh, going on three seasons now. Um, he has started four of the Giants' first nine games. He's a solid guy. He's a solid contributor. I love it because Pro Football Focus gave him the second highest Giant player during the team week in nine. That in a dollar fifty, he'll get you a dollar fifty. Actually, I should say that in dollar fifty, you'll probably get you a dollar twenty two with inflation. Not, you know, he, he's, he's not the same player since Dalvin Thomas, unless we all know that. And then, of course, we got picked up the, the venerable O'Shane Zimenez. I was a big O'Shane Zimenez fan when he came out of Own Dominion. I admit that freely. I have an O'Shane Zimenez rookie jersey, number 53. And then he, uh, he's, he, I mean, he had an okay rookie season. And we've said it before. He only has one move, only a one pass rushing move, <laughs> which is okay. But it, it's, you know, but you thought he would have developed. I believe he had four and a half seasons, uh, four and a half 
uh, sacks in 16 games, which two starts his rookie season. He uh, missed most of last season because he tore his rotator cuff. So he was, he was out, he was out for that season as well. And eight games a season, he's made 12 tackles, three pass breakups. Um, there's really nothing there. There's no there there. I would say the Giants acquired solid guys. Not even solid guys, because I don't even think Ocean Zimmon is a solid guy. But they're just unspectacular. There's nothing there. Now, if you look at Odell, they didn't get the production out of Odell either over in Cleveland. He did go over 1,000 yards in 19, but the Browns won 6-10 and 10, following the 7-8-1 and one season. Um, he was also, you know... He was he, he he you know he had the injuries he he was kind of he kind of had some drama going on there he was you know he was lobbying for a trade with some players you know he said late in the season that he had no desire to play elsewhere then after that he backed it up with that and then he had a much quieter 2020 season you know there was really no drama but he went down with the ACL the Beckham, they were five and two when he went down with the ACL injury. Without Beckham, they finished the regular season eleven and five. Uh, they recorded their first playoff win, I think, in twenty six years by blowing out. That's when they blew out the Chiefs. So, and he's he's been he worked his way back from injury. He had a you know he didn't really play much. He had a solid debut in week three. He had five and nine. Tar- he caught five out of nine targets for seventy seven yards, and that was a twenty six six win over uh, Chicago. But then he kind of tailed off. He had four catches for 47 in the next two yards, and he put up a solid stat line against uh, in their loss against the Cardinals when he had five catches for 79. He did suffer that shoulder injury, and that's kind of limited him. But, you know, it, he, he just never – he was never the player that they thought they would be. If you take a look at the Browns with Odell Beckham was 15 – excuse me, 14 and 15. And that's including the playoffs. The Browns were 9 and 5 without Beckham. And we did that. We did the whole breakdown of how Baker plays better without Odell on the field. So, if you want to say if there was a winner, a winner or a loser on this team or on this trade, it's a wash. Peppers isn't going to be on the team. O'Shane's not going to be on the team, and you don't know what you're going to get with Dexter Lawrence because he's still he's not the same player he was his first two seasons without Dalvin Tomlinson. I'm not saying I'm not saying Dalvin Tomlinson made Dexter Lawrence, but what I am saying is Dexter Lawrence is not showing the same ferocity that he did his first two seasons because he's he's getting those double. And I said it before, Dalvin Tomlinson doesn't show up on the stat sheet. He does the dirty work. He does the dirty work. He ties up two guys in the line that helps Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence and. You're just not getting that right now from Dexter. He's got he's to kind of figure it out. He's got to kind of figure out to be how to be his own player and not feed off some other players such as Dalvin Tomlinson. I've always mentioned Dalvin Tomlinson is going to be important to this team against their, with their run defense, and that and the lack of linebackers, and I think that's shown. Don't forget, everyone, catch me with the Bad Dog tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It'll be fun as always. Uh, Online Big Blue. It's called OG Online Big Blue, the member services. We're going to probably do like two or three uh, members-only videos a week. They're short. I said last week it was going to be short, and I think think the first video was 10 minutes. (laughs) So maybe it's not that short. Because you know I love to talk. I love to hear myself talk because I'm so awesome. And yes, that is me being sarcastic. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, you can subscribe. Bring that bell, you think that means that'd be awesome.